I think that you either fight or you lose ground. And that one of the challenges for Republicans, they're not in the habit of fighting. I thought it was very revealing that Trump's positive comment about Hillary was that she's a fighter. She doesn't give up. And Republicans need to acquire that. The issue for the next 28 days is not are you for Donald Trump. The issue is are you prepared to have Hillary Clinton as president? With that last question, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich posing that to his fellow Republicans. Jonah Goldberg, senior editor of National Review and Fox News contributor. Jonah, how are you doing today? And good morning. Great to be here, Bill. Answer the question, are you prepared to have Hillary Clinton as president? G Gingrich, he laid it out there today. Yeah, look, I mean, that's been Donald Trump's best argument for a very long time, which is that he's not Hillary Clinton. It's also Hillary Clinton's best argument for a very long time, and that she's not Donald Trump, because these have been the two most unpopular, um, high, unfavorable uh, candidates in modern American political history, since the invention of polling. And uh, a huge chunk of both of, uh, uh, about something like a third of people who say they're voting for Hillary are saying they're voting for Hillary because she's not Trump, and about a third say they're voting for Trump because she's not Hillary. Mm. That, t that tells you the state of American politics to a certain degree. Yeah, the, the terrible towel there, screen right for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, <laughs> Trump tweeted this around 10 a.m. Eastern Time, so 26 minutes ago. Put the tweet up, folks, if we can. Here we go. It is so nice that the shackles have been taken off me and I can now fight for the America the way I want to. What does that look like? Uh, that looks like, I mean, look, just to be honest with viewers, I have always thought Donald Trump would be a disaster for the conservative movement, the Republican Party, and the United States of America. I thought it was folly to take this guy on into the party. I thought he was a cancerous con man and a huge and corrupting influence in the party, and I still believe that. I also think that maybe Paul Ryan made a mistake 28 days out from the election of trying to be cute by this and trying to play it both ways. Because what the Republican Party, what need, the Republican Party desperately needs to do is hold on to the House and the Senate. And by giving Donald Trump this sort of psychological permission to go back to his comfort zone of attacking the Republican Party, I think could have really dire consequences for down-ballot tickets, which are the only races at this point as a conservative that I really care all that much about. Uh, well, and Rob was talking about that a moment ago. Uh, Jerry Sy, Wall Street Journal, Donald Trump starting to look like an independent candidate. I think that's very interesting. Hold on to that point. Editorial Wall Street Journal writes this, quote, Democrats want to portray Mr. Trump as a solely Republican infection, but the New Yorker's rise could not have happened without the political tenor and governing example of the past eight years, end quote. That's a pox on your house. I agree. I could not agree with that more. I think liberals, I mean, forget the fact that the mainstream media built up and gave Trump enormous exposure during the primaries because they thought it was hilarious to watch the Republican Party come unglued about the Trump candidacy. Never mind that in the WikiLeaks emails, we now know that the Democrats wanted Donald Trump to be their opponent and were terrified of people like Marco Rubio. The simple fact is, for eight years, Barack Obama has ruled the has governed this country as president with sovereign contempt for the concerns of his critics and his political opponents. He is, we have lost faith and confidence in every public institution except basically the army and small business is in the gutter in this country in large part because Barack Obama governed as if anybody who disagreed with him was either a fool, a racist, a bigot, or, or some kind of uh, paranoid schizophrenic. And we saw that with the lies that came from Obamacare and all the rest. Is it any wonder that a large segment of the American public, either by supporting Bernie Sanders or Donald Trump, would grow with rage and just say, let's tear this whole thing down because Washington has betrayed us? Wow. Jonah, thanks for coming in today. Jonah Goldberg here right in Washington, D.C. We'll talk soon. Thanks. 10.30 now here in New York. You bet. All right. So Donald Trump.